Hello, and welcome to today's session with Infigo and Print IQ. Today's session, we uh, intend to show you how to elevate your business using one of the many intelligent integrations between the two companies. Okay, so first of all, we're going to do a quick rerun in case you don't know who Infigo are and all who Print IQ are. I should imagine most of you do by now, and if you don't, you should get to know both. We're going to um, jump in and do a web to print demonstration. So uh, Paul Bromley, who's with us today, who's head of global sales for Infigo, will take us through the web to print side of the uh, workflow and share a nice little update. And then he'll hand over to Rob from Print IQ, and Rob will then um, show you how we receive the file from the web to print system and ultimately how it arrives in the back end of the MIS platform. And then we are delighted to have a very special guest with us today. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have, uh, we're have we very lucky to share um, some very special customers between the two businesses. And today we are we're delighted to have Positive Plus Sarah Carter with us. And uh, we're here about Sarah's journey, like we've done in previous sessions where we've heard from Eric or, or Georgina. We're, we're here about what Sarah and, and the guys, Danny and, and the guys went through when implementing both systems, why they implemented both systems, um, and uh, maybe what advice they could give to you to realize some of that, um, some of that success. And then following um, a spotlight on uh, Positive Plus, we will then open the floor up. We have some questions for Sarah to find a little bit about you know, what they think uh, as the customer about us. Maybe we, we don't want to hear what they've got to say. Maybe we do. Um, but let's see what Sarah's got to say. Um, we'll also encourage all of you to pop a question in as well uh, during that time. And um, ultimately, the floor is open. We want to have uh, sort of a, a roundtable style discussion. We want to hear your thoughts. We want to hear um, any anxieties you may have for implementing one of the sessions, uh, any ideas you may have. Uh, maybe some feature requests, and I can I can see both development teams shrinking right now in their in their chairs in the offices. But maybe there's some things that we could do um, together to uh, bring even more value to the print shop. So just a reminder of the team: we have Rob again from Print IQ. I'm Chris, head of digital marketing at um, Infigo, and I'll be chairing the sessions today. We have Paul from um, Infigo as well. He'll be doing the demonstration with Web to Print. And then Sarah Carter, who will be our VIP, our guest today, who will be talking us through her experiences with using both systems. So without further ado, I will hand over to Rob, who will talk us through the lovely Print IQ. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, everyone, for joining today. Um, I would just obviously give you a, a brief overview of Print IQ. Um, if you don't know us, hopefully you will get to know us during this uh, presentation. So we've over 60 members of staff uh, located across three regions of five countries. Uh, Print IQ has a global presence that allows us to effectively support thousands of our users worldwide. The extensive reach is um, completed by our dedicated in-house development team, which is so key for us. Everything is kept in-house. Uh, we don't put anything out. So all our software updates and everything like that is all kept in in-house. Um, so we can control everything. Um, one of the most important parts for us is our partners, uh, a bit like Print, um, sorry, Infigo, not Print IQ, um, who we're partnering with today. And obviously that makes our system a lot more robust realistically as we bring other partners in to make more automation. Um, we were, we started in 1999 um, by a family in New Zealand, and in 2022, we were purchased by a company called Banyan Software. Um, 2023, we appointed a new CEO uh, called John Alden, who has very much actually touched most of the parts of the business now over the last uh, 12, 18 months and changed many things, including our regional structure, um, which we changed in 2024, uh, which allows us to support our customers an awful lot more. Um, it just allows us to react an awful lot more as well. So as you can see there, Print IQ is not just an MIS system that's estimating, scheduling, uh, creating our costs. We are a truly cloud-based system um, that is accessible 24 seven from anywhere in the world. Um, all you really require is the web browser. We can use pretty much any web browser that you can think of. There's many out there now where you mainly use Google Chrome. 
um, print IQ eliminates rel 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 repetitive tasks, or I'll get my words out, um, that you guys are probably doing many, many times during your uh, daily work or your double entry of data, which obviously this, hopefully, this presentation that we will do shortly will show you, you don't have to do that anymore. So as I say, we're doing a lot of things in IQ, but working with our partners is key. Okay, thank you, Rob. And I thought that repetitive was a bit of a repetitive, repetitive play on words there. I thought it was very it was good. Very I'm going to hand you over to um, Paul Bromley now, who will um, take us through um, the Infigo side, the web to print site, which technically would come first in the demo we will we'll show later. Over to you, Paul. Yep, thank you, Chris. Good morning and good afternoon to everyone. Um, I'm Paul Bromley, Head of Global Sales for Infigo. And we're going to take you through some fantastic innovation today that we continue to develop with our uh, partners, Print IQ. Um, if you can change the slide, please, Chris. Yeah, so just to cover a bit of the history about Infigo, um, we're 15 years old as a business. So the brainchild and still privately owned um, by Douglas Gibson. So uh, the vision for our business 15 years ago was to help our customers turbo boost revenue streams through innovative web to print solution, um, which is Infigo. Um, we're small but mighty, probably might need to change that in the future as we grow by the week. So the business is growing at pace as we expand in both regions and team. But again, we've got a very, very, very strong team. Um, I would say the headcount is more towards development and software development that is um rather than sales or people in the sales roles so yeah it's, it's massively outnumbered there but that just shows what a software company should be in my opinion which is very tech focused very innovative always looking at the future listening to customers and uh, the feedback that we uh so well so welcome and we work with a lot of verticals a lot of industries so we're not just segmented into general commercial print we're working in labels wide format point of sale uh, merchandising and uh, digital print so again we've got a, a real wide variety to the industries that we support um, and that will change and we'll add to that in the future as well as Felding Carton um, and we've got a very well proven record of success so we've got over 3,000 websites across the world now um, and that is growing week on week again as people look to innovate and then also automate their current solutions by linking systems together uh, without restraints or restrictions. Um, our install base is also growing, again, because of attending shows such as Drupa. Now that's great to be back on the scene. Um, our customers are UK, US, Canada, um, mainland Europe, um, as well as Australia as well, which is the home of Print IQ and New Zealand. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, and this is really just a graph, uh, sorry, um, a map just to show the, the team now and where we're based. So the Infigo team, again, since COVID, you know, it does, you don't have to be based in an office anymore. And it's a good thing for Infigo because we've got the best of the best in our team um, based in Spain, Germany, Moldova, UK, and more recently, um, UAE, which is uh, another great addition to the team. And I think the one thing that we try and get across today, again, partnering with Print IQ, is the power of partnerships driven by not just only Infigo, but also our customers and also our partners as well, because we are seen as a key point of the workflow. Um, so you'll see just a selection of our partners um, on the diagram here, which Chris is kindly sharing. And there's a lot of work that we put into our partners as well. So we're very proud to work with everyone um and the marketing team as you'll see daily it's unreal what we do as a marketing engine but again that just benefits our partners here and today's print iq which is uh, again a great thing to be sharing um as i mentioned earlier in figo we don't just sit in a single vertical so a business that would invest in the Infigo solution in the core platform we can happily take you into markets that you may never have been before. So the wide format market is very common, very popular at the moment, as well as labels, which is growing at pace, and then also packaging. Um, but we are a full e-commerce solution, just to be very clear on that. Some people think we are just an iframe or we are just uh, the editor, which is 
you'll see from the demo today, we are a full e-commerce end-to-end solution that goes from order entry all the way to dispatch and shipping. Um, the development team is 20 plus strong. And this, as I said earlier, the, the team of developers now and that side of the business far outweighs other areas because for a software company that innovates and updates their software on a bi-weekly basis, you have to have a very strong development team. And again, we've got some, some of the industry's best in our team. Um, we innovate all the time, not just the technology, but also how we interact with our customers. So we've brought out two new options, which are We Build and We Teach, which our customer success team are constantly promoting to the benefit of our customers, which is if you haven't got the skills in house, we'll build that with you once we've done the scope. But also we also work with companies that have the skills in house. So we call that the We Teach option where we'll use our fantastic Infigo Academy to help companies to self build. You're watching the Elevate Your Business with Intelligent Integrations with Infigo and Print IQ. I'm now going to introduce Sarah. Sarah from Positive Plus. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you for the introduction, Chris. So, as you said, I am Sarah. I'm the Director of the Client Services at Positive. Um, we are the proud users of Print IQ and Infigo. We use both systems and we introduce them, which we're going to go on to later. But positive in a whole, um, we like to introduce ourselves as the trusted partner that empower brands to flourish through the creativity of design and print. Um, it's a little bit different. We're not the same standard printers. We do everything from digital, LIFO, large format, point of sale, direct mail, web to print, um, storage and fulfillment. We have been in the industry for over 30 years. Um, we're a very strong force to be reckoned with and i'm sure in figo and print iq will agree with that when we move on later um and yeah i'm here to give sort of assistance and guidance for anybody that's looking to move over to Infigo and print iq really thank you sarah is there anything else you'd like to share on the business um well our concept um is basically to innovate Innovate our companies through the power of beauty and craft and ensuring you don't compromise on the, on the environment. And our, probably our most forefront and important message is we believe in the power of print. And we're trying to put that through to our clients with suppliers and partners such as Infigo and Print IQ. Thank you much, Sarah. And thank you for joining us today as well. And we thank Danny as well for his support with everything that he's, um, he's championing with both companies as well. So thank you very much. Okay, so we move on to the, the exciting bit. We're now going to hand over to, to Paul Bromley, who's going to talk us through um, one of the latest innovations that we're we're launching at Print United in, uh, in, in America in September. Uh, we're going to give you a sneak peek today uh, on this feature. And uh, if you'd like to see it in more detail or maybe have a more in-depth conversation, um, both companies will be available at Print United to uh, see demonstrations and have a, a deeper conversation. So at this point, I'm going to hand over to Paul Bromley. Yep. Thank you, Chris. Um, yeah. So as Chris mentioned there, we're going to cover today just a bit of background as well um, as the, the new um, custom pricing feature, which is fully integrated with Print IQ. Um, so for anyone that may not have attended previous webinars, um, where were you hiding? And uh, we always try and be very um, um, promoting of new features and products, especially when we've got our customers in our front and center view to make our solutions uh, innovative to what you do and also save time and also reduce costs so you can react quicker. So just as we go through here today, I'm going to cover Megredit, which is Infigo's um, editing solution. So again, a lot of people just think that that's our only thing, but we're a full e-commerce solution uh, with thousands of sites worldwide. So we'll do this on the uh, bottle here, and then we'll move through to um, a static item. And then finally, we'll cover the custom quoting. So just to be very clear on what we're doing today, we have a full integration with Infigo to Print IQ, which is bi-directional. So for people that may not understand or want to learn more on that, we can do a further session, um, as Chris mentions. But essentially what it means is the systems are connected it is real time 24 7 um, and in this instance print iq becomes the pricing engine and infigo becomes that web interface so what that means for you as a business is 
euphoria has now landed in the business because pricing can be controlled in one engine, which is the single source of truth, which should always be the MIS. So in this scenario today, all of the pricing, as I mentioned before, and also the operations or attributes, as we call them, which are things like paper selection, sizes and finishing, will be driven from Print IQ into the Infigo storefront. So if I just dive in now and then we'll just look at MegaEdit and we'll just do a very quick five minute overview. So essentially, the, the look and feel of this site today, we built this for Print IQ so that Print IQ can do their own demos if they wish as well. But essentially, on the demo, what we've got is this live connectivity now. So pricing and calculations are done real time. Nothing sat inside um, of Infigo. And now we'll launch MegaEdit. So MegaEdit, edit, for anyone that doesn't know, is our online editor where you can build custom templates. We have an InDesign plugin called Invent, and you can build those templates and upload those into a storefront and allow your customers to go in, add logos, reposition logos, move logos around, rescale, resize, and then finally get that sign off as we're looking to snap here to a grid, get that sign off through an approval process. Again, that could be done through Print IQ or Infigo. But then we have the ability to render in real time against a 3D model or shape or as a 2D PDF. So that's completely down to you. But in Infigo, you know, not everyone works in 3D, but you'll see some of the benefits thereof. We can show and share lighting sh sources, shadings, embellishments, etc. But the, the actual product there is real time rendering. So we're doing that through a browser. No smoke and mirrors in this occasion. I'm on Google Chrome. So you'll see that in real time. But that's what MegaEdit is. It's a template based solution for personalization or to allow you to check things and then sign those off, maybe based on previous templates or brochures or documentation. But this could be pushed over into the hands of your customers where they could make these small changes, maybe a document change or a code change. Again, the ideas I'm sure will be flying around everyone's heads now. Oh, wow, that would work for such and such a customer. But again, it doesn't have to be 3D. It can be static 2D. This is the more glamorous part of the, the demonstration. But if I add that to the basket now, MegaEdit will end that session and then push me back into the storefront. And then there's the product there with the pricing and the quantity ready to order. So if we move on to the next product, we've then got our um, static product here, which is our brochure. And we've had a revamp to our upload engine. So in here, you'll see configurations. This product isn't linked in real time, although it looks like it's pulsing there, where we can check our attribute selection. So this is very key to an Infigo site that's just driven by Infigo, where your attribute combinations, um, so just to be very clear on that, in Print IQ, it's an operation, and in Infigo, it's an attribute. It's the same thing. It's material, it's finishing types, it's sizings, and you can have as many combinations as you wish. So once we put some rogue quantities in, so you'll see these drop into IQ, everything we're configuring here will then be passed into Print IQ as Rob will show. So I won't steal Rob's thunder there. Um, mm -hmm. You'll see we've got our new upload um, option for single or multi-part. So again, got a lot of customers that are doing book work with multiple files that need uploading. So part of that, and again, a further demonstration could be an upload then linking into a pre-flight, which again, we can also do. But once in here, I'll select the brochure and then I'll push that in. The Infigo uploader, we'll take that in. We get a small preview of it and then we can preview it as a multi-page document and pan through it if we want to check it or we can then just add it to the basket and check out. Could be a complete reprint or a reorder. And again, we support both of those options. Um, down at the bottom, we've also got some instructions. Again, things that we type in here. Please deliver quickly. All of these things, just to show there's no smoke and mirrors here, um, will be passed into the MIS as well. And then last but not least, um, because I know that we're keen to get through all this and hand over to Rob, is our custom quoting piece. So just to take a few minutes on this, essentially what we've got is these products already are built in regards to combinations and selections inside Print IQ. So what we've done with custom quoting is 
we've given the users the ability of Infigo to now map those combinations or offer those combinations as options. So these are operations slash attributes. So we're actually taking this feed live in real time from Print IQ. So we can go for set sizing and also an array of materials, or we could go in there and ask IQ to calculate, let's just do something really bizarre, a custom combination of size and width. And then we'll now see that pricing request get calculated. So that's done real time, no smoke and mirrors. You know, that is all very bizarre sizes, strange combination, but IQ calculated that and then displayed that in the storefront. So the beauty there to any IQ Infigo user is that that is handled once inside Print IQ and the Infigo interface is just an interface. We're just showing that live real-time data. So the reduction in managing two systems is just halved and the speed for turning things around, again, a lot simpler. And also you're leaving the knowledge that's built this combination of pricing in the system rather than in people's heads. So again, to a business owner, that's where the value is. The, the, the logic and the knowledge stays in the system. So if I just go and put another random quantity in for that, Rob will then see this when he opens up uh, Print IQ. We'll just upload just a beer label, Rob, just so you can see that when it drops in, just so it's different to the uh, the brochure. Okay, thanks, Paul. And again, that can just be an upload, 2D preview, and then the user can be checked out. So in the combination, we've got static, we've got SKU-based, stock-based items in here, and we've also got live pricing items from the custom quoting, again, driven from IQ into the storefront. Just before I do check out, I'll just show you also that stock isn't left to any chance or manual checks. So what we're now doing again with the Infigo interface into Print IQ, and you'll now see that the stock availability is 990 of these roller banners. Now that is being driven from Print IQ in real time to the Infigo storefront. And that is shown just here. For anyone that is rather small. If I just check my basket now and then push that straight through to checkout. Check the address, which will be the same as the uh, billing address. Select my shipping method. And again, that can be driven to us from the MIS. And then finally, if you do have a PO um, and a PO number to hand, you could enter that information here and we'll pass that into Print IQ so they can handle that and then marry up the invoice versus the uh, uh, purchase order. Okay, Rob, so once I'm finished here, over to you. And we should have an ID number generated, which is 6905. Thank you, Paul. Right, if I just share my screen. There we go. Hopefully everyone can see that, no problem at all. Um, so yeah, while Paul's actually been sending those um, jobs across, um, the beauty of obviously working with Infigo as web to print is anyone that already knows IQ, um, we have just bypassed probably 50 to 60% of the work that's already would have been done in IQ. So there's now no need for us to do quick quotations or simplify quotations as some of you would, would know it or custom product product where you're actually creating your quotations right from the start or ordering something from the, the store itself. Um, obviously, all orders are coming directly into Print IQ and into the production section of IQ, which I can show you. Um, we do store all the quotations as well. We can see our top, um, the job at the top there, which is uh, our job ticket. If you go into more details for me there, Paul. There we go, that's Bella. There we go. We can now actually see what's going on, which is good. So our external job reference, 6905. We've got our details there, which underneath, so production details and everything that's coming through. And then if there's any delivery instructions on your delivery notes, that will come through on the part below. We've got the artwork there, which can be downloaded for pre-flighting or anything you want to. And as I said earlier, 
if we need to, we can actually um, send that directly from IQ to um, a third party for pre-flighting as a workflow. As Paul's highlighted there, we've got the details that have been pulled through from um, Infigo, which have obviously originally started in IQ. You've got our quote number there. Uh, so we create a quote as soon as it comes into IQ, which we can show you at, um, in a moment as well. And then we can start to capture the data of this job, which is so important for IQ and for you guys as well. So what Paul's actually done there is actually click that on. Now that can be done various different ways. We can do that as um, straight turn on, turn off as Paul's done there, or we can use barcode capture as well, which can be done via the job texting. So Paul's just done a file check there. Now that hasn't actually done the file check. That's just us capturing the data of that time. Now that can be linked, as I say, with a third party, which we can turn that on and off with. Um, if we want to go out to PDF proof, again, something we can do through Infigo as well, um, but we can capture that data going out for PDF proof. That has now moved that from one production board or pre-production board in this case to the next one. So we're now going to go to the print section. So if we start that off printing, please, Paul, you see just above that, we actually start to go on a journey. So if you are printing, it would now put the printer into amber. And as soon as Paul clicks off that and moves to the next stage, which would be in boss, we should see that part go green. There we go. And that's also happening not only on this interface, but in the production boards in the background. Now, if we want to go deeper into that, we can do. Obviously, we haven't got massive amounts of time today, but we can start to go deeper into that. So as Paul's capturing this data, he's going to click the last one there. There we go. And now that's finished the production side. Now, what we would normally do here is we'd normally move to dispatch. We would create a consignment stock. There we go. And that will give you all your details. And the important part here, again, is this journey that you see here as detail wise has started off in print IQ. It's delivered this. Um, so the information is connecting to Infigo. So, if, Paul, if you just come out of that part for the moment. So if you just close that, even though the consignment stock done, that's perfect. You can see where this has been done originally from IQ with the pricing. And then obviously pulled through from Infigo back into IQ. So you've got your FedEx side of things there. So the delivery side, you've got the quantity of the job, the weight that it's going to be and everything that's going through the process. So it's really important that all this data is captured. But again, this is re relieving touch points within your business, which is obviously a overhead for you guys. So once that is dispatched and you can save that there, Paul, so it is dispatched, that will then link back to Infigo, um, the interface to actually tell Paul that this job has now been dispatched or to the customer in this case, been dispatched and off it goes. Um, I think just before obviously we leave the print IQ side, the other part that all that data is being captured, that Paul has just clicked on and clicked off. Um, so you can see all your timings within your job and make sure your estimates and your costings are all correct. There we go. And that journey is now completely gone green where that has all been done. And you can sign the stock has gone in there. And Paul mentioned about POs and stuff earlier. You can actually put those POs, which would all come through in this information, which is highlighted there. So it's a little bit more difficult for us today because Paul's my hands um, and I'm just talking him through it. But um, there's plenty there. But we can also take you through this in a lot, lot more depth with bringing in production boards and everything like that. Thank you, Rob. Uh, we had a question from Rob who was asking about the uh, shipping settings. I, I, I believe the shipping settings. I'll, I'll, Rob, um, I will come back to that, that question later on if that's okay. I think that's a, that's a valid one. We can we can address that. Um, I'm just going to. I'd also just like to highlight actually that um, during that session where Paul took over um, from Rob, that just highlights the need for cloud-based solutions in the MIS space right now. So. Um, just shows you how quickly you can hop onto a browser and, and do what you need to do. Okay, so um, we just had uh, our lovely demonstration from the chaps. They talked us through um, a very sort of simple um, workflow, for web to print into MIS. Um, gentlemen, would you like to talk us through this um, beautiful diagram prepared for us by the teams um, on all the benefits um, between the web to print and the MIS system? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um... You know, from our point of view at Print IQ, it's the journey 
does start with us, you know, working directly with you guys as well. Um, so the the product side of the costings are all in IQ and then delivered um, or pulled through, for, I should say, is gone for better words, um, by, by Infigo once the web to print part of it starts. And then like we've just shown in the demo, um, Paul's part and my part, everything then goes on that journey from what products the customer is ordering through to the workflow, um, into production, warehousing, out to dispatch. Everything is there for the customer to utilize. Um, Paul can probably elaborate on that more from the Invigo side. Yeah, I think uh, from our side, as I said earlier, we're trying to turbo boost revenue streams. And with that comes normally a lot of orders. Um, so to manage that increase in orders, you've got to have visibility in your business. And when there's an MIS like Print IQ in play, um, that has to become the single source of truth. So that full bi-directional visibility for all key areas and touch points is so important because otherwise you'll end up with chaos in every department or you'll just push that bottleneck somewhere. Normally it will end up in dispatch where they've got hundreds of parcels hopefully to try and get out the door so um, yeah visibility um simplicity from a very complex system you know in figo and mis are as complex as each other in regards to what it can do not in regards to the setup more more to do with what are the capabilities of both platforms they are immensely powerful and so i think this shows really in a very simplistic form how we can control that sort of full 360 approach to a business touching all areas from order entry to dispatch and everything in between thank you paul i'm just um before we move on actually i'm just going to share a quick poll um i'd like to know actually um how many of you currently operate the connection between your web to print and your mis and if you're missing one of those elements then i suggest you select no so how many of you have web to print and mis connected and communicated Please submit your votes for me, please. Okay, so we're hoping, well, I guess you could say we're hoping the nose win. <laughs> hmm. so we've got the results. Do it one more minute. Okay, so 14% of you do have a connection. Sorry, fortunately, you have do a connection and nine of you don't. So that's interesting. So, so those that don't, I suggest talking to one of these gentlemen who will help you um, gain more out of your workflow and ultimately drive more profit. Okay, on to the good stuff, Sarah. So um, like I said at the beginning of the session, we've enjoyed talking to previous um, customers from previous events. It's been fantastic. Uh, Georgie from Kubikity and, and Eric from the Boom Group. Um, today, we'd like to hear about your journey, or Positive Plus's journey, may I say, um, and hear the good, the bad, the ugly, and the wise. Yeah, I'm here to answer all of your questions. I'm ready and waiting. Okie dokie. Right. So then, sir, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick off if that's okay. Yeah. Um, fine. I'm guessing. We should never guess or assume that you evaluated web to print and the um, MIS solution quite a bit before purchasing either of them. What drove you to Infigo and Print IQ? And um, I'm going to ask a really tricky question here and a bit of a co competitive angle. What was easier to implement? Uh -huh. But also, before you answer, what did you go with first and why? Um, so, <laughs> thanks for putting me on the spot. Um, so, if I just rewind it a little bit, just so you get a better understanding of the sort of situation that we were facing um, when we first started to look at new suppliers and new ways that the business can run here. So, yes, firstly, we did do a huge amount of research into what we wanted. Um, before we decided to make that leap, we were actually working with companies such as Shuttleworth, PageFlex, who are RRI 360. Um, and we just felt that they weren't moving forward with what Positive Plus wanted, if I'm honest. They weren't, um, you know, they weren't showing the desire or the need to move with the world. Um, so it's quite antiquated and, yeah, it just, it wasn't the best experience for our customers. 
Um, from Positive's point of view, we wanted to partner with suppliers that could really sort of drive innovation, show continuous growth, and that they could support us. Basically, I think that's the most important thing. You know, you guys are experts in your field. We we like to think we're experts in ours. Um, we chose Print IQ first. Sorry, in Figo. Um, and it sort of came hand in hand, if I'm honest. So obviously, Print IQ came first, and then we saw the capabilities of the two being able to be joined together. Um, the reason why we went, it's because we felt that it's not an off-the-shelf option. Um, it's easy, customizable, and it can be developed and it can grow when our customers need to grow and when our clients need to grow. Um, but they do take time to implement. So it's it's not a click of a finger process. It does take the time and you have to dedicate that time to it. Um, bit of advice that I would probably say is don't try and do everything at once. Um, maybe launch it in phases that worked great for us you know we i think we had like a four stage rollout that we done with a team and our clients as well and it just made it manageable from the teams here mm. which then meant we could support our customers which is the most important thing okay and that's um there's a really occurring theme here actually um ladies and gents because on our previous sessions with Kirikati and, and voom both eric and georgina said the same thing in terms of um, you know, taking time to um, uh, phase the, the implementation and, and, you know, have a vision of where you want it to go and, and then stick to your plan, you know. So that, that's really good to hear that there's, there's a trend that for success comes discipline and planning. Taking the, um, let's go a little bit further into the collaboration between the two. So um, obviously, what's it, two different tech companies, um, obviously both cloud-based very similar there's about three or four years of some very hard development and some good some good um work between the two talk to me about the features and, and the requests and the way you've seen the systems evolve um throughout your time with both companies yeah so um like i said positive always like to partner with our suppliers we like to make sure that's an open open channel between everyone um we're not a company that keeps everything close to our chest we like to share because we just feel that it grows. It, it makes everybody grow and it makes everything for the for the greater good, really. Um, both class, like both of you have been extremely helpful with the implementation um, and worked together to provide the full process that we needed. I think Positive do really like to push the boundaries. We, we don't like to stand still, if I'm honest. Um, we always want to be the best so that our customers can be the best. Um, I would say that you guys really helped us with that because you would actually, you'd actually listen, you'd actually understand what we wanted. And if you couldn't answer us there and then you'd go away, you'd work it out. You would speak with each other without having to get us then re-involved again. Um, that is a really strong point for us. Everyone's got a day job to do, you know, while we're trying to implement systems as well. So we found it so helpful that you guys would actually go away behind the scenes, work together, and then come back to us as a joint collective. Um, with the help of you guys, both of you, Print IQ and Infigo, we are already collaborating with so many more um, Print IQ and Infigo users. I know there's some guys on from Cubiquity at the moment. They've just onboarded us as a supplier. So that wouldn't have happened without Print IQ and Infigo. So we're really grateful and it just shows that there's such a strong community between between you all, if I'm honest. Right. That's good to hear. That's great feedback. And maybe that's a, a message for the industry in general that we should be sharing resources and helping each other rather than trying to go it alone. I've got two more. Yeah, because I think sorry, what, sorry. On, sorry, on one point, one of our biggest, you know, when we when we did leave PageFlex, we had customized that that's that system to the utter extent. And we did have to review who we were going to go with. One of the little hurdles that we came across first was an address book functionality. When we moved over to Infigo, it wasn't available at the beginning, but we insisted that we needed it. You guys went away, you figured it out, you came back to us with an adaptation, and 
moved us through a new journey with the address book, which was exactly what we needed. Great. That's so great. congrats on that. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to ask a couple more questions and then I've got a couple that are coming in now from, from the chat. So um, yeah. let's be honest, I'm sure it hasn't been perfect. Anything that's, that's good or successful has bumps in the road. Yeah. <sighs> Um, you've touched on it already in terms of a recommendation to people in terms of mindset and planning and strategy. What else would you would you recommend to people? Um, so, a thinking yeah, about I, you know one or one or other, and b uh, the collective. Yeah, I mean, like I said at the very beginning, you you have to dedicate the time, and you have to have dedicated people run this because. Yeah. If you move away from it, you're going to forget it. You have to be dedicated to it to make sure that you can move your business forward. Um, what we done, for example, was we had Danny, who's positive CEO. He built and implemented Print IQ. But with Danny building it and implementing it, we then needed someone who was like our internal champion that the team could go to and ask for advice. So we had Jade do that for us, who is a client service manager here. Um, and he's, on, he's on now, I believe. No, sorry, not Dave, Jade. Oh, uh, okay, okay. And I think they're probably on it. They just haven't mentioned that they're on the chat. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Jade was sort of like our in-house champion. She was the front of house. She'd make sure that everything got done. She was pushing Print IQ and Infigo for all of the bits that we needed. So making sure all of those dots were connected. And I think it's so important that you have that. Um, but I would probably say to anybody that's thinking about, you know, changing their MIS or doing Infigo, just reach out to them. I know they helped us so much when we were getting stuck on certain things. And it could be so silly, even if you like, you could rewatch a video, you could take as many notes as you wanted. But like I said, if you're not living and breathing it, you will forget. Mm. um just call you guys you're you know you're there to help i know our guys had you on speed dial and would literally be like help me help me fix this and something that would take us a half a day would literally take you guys half an hour if that thank you sir so i'm hearing product champions internal resource buy-in commitment all the things really that you need for the, for the journey one yeah. one last question and then um from me or and then we're prepared yeah. to go to the, the other questions that have come through while we've been speaking. What does the future look like for Positive Plus? Um, God, that's a challenging deep. question, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we're going deep this afternoon. Um, being honest, Positive's journey will just keep on growing and it will keep on developing. Um, we do have a passion here to introduce the younger generation into print. Um, we want to make it fun. We want to make it exciting, which was a big point as to why we introduced Print IQ and Infigo, because you don't have to have 30 years experience to know what you're doing. It's so straightforward. It's so easy. It's if I can do it, anybody can do it because I'm the least tech savvy person that there is. Um, so, yeah, I'd really say, you know, we're always going to be pushing those boundaries with the two with the two partners um we always want to make sure that we look after our clients so anything that they request we will always push back to you and we feel that we made the right choice because you guys do listen and you do come back and even if it's not something that you can do straight away we know that you'll be looking at it to like further releases or or how you could adapt what we want and make it a service that can be available now um so yeah without sounding cliche and cheesy i'd probably say the world's our oyster right absolutely and working together as well with partners and people like everyone on this call today then anything can be achieved um thank you so much so i'm going to ask a few more questions i've got a few for for paul and rob as well so i'm going to try and catch anything i can rob asked early during the demonstration um why is it fedex when first class royal mail was chosen I think I know the answer to this one, gentlemen. Was it purely that the shipping uh, agents weren't set up for the demo or maybe we can cover that one off? Yeah, definitely. I think um, I saw Rob's question as well. So I've just gone back in and checked. And I think what it was, I think Paul and I will do a, a very short separate video for 
uh, for Rob to send in because I think one of Paul's orders had come in um, earlier, which was picked up by me on that demo via Paul, uh, but it got slightly confusing. So I'll send Rob a further demo there showing the raw mail side, side of stuff coming through as well as um, an additional one with the FedEx side. Awesome, thank you. Duff asks, um, this one's to you, Sarah. Um, are you mainly using this for commercial work or B2B? Uh, so we're a B2B business at the moment. Um, so we have many online shops for our clients that can go on and order stock or they can order print on demand. Um, that then obviously feeds through into Print IQ for our teams who then arrange whether it's a print job that needs to go into our production house or whether it's a stock job that needs to go into our warehousing team to then pick, pack and ship. So I would probably say we're using it on multiple levels at the moment. Um, yeah, it, it was, I think when you first sometimes look at Infigo, you might think it's more suited to B2C, but I think we've been real showcasing of that it can work for B2B. You just need to, to build it and work with each other to make sure you get that right. So that's a separate webinar. <laughs> B2B, B2B. Sorry. No, no, don't apologize. We Maybe that's what we should do next. Um, and, it, and needless to say, we would need a, a good MIS, whether it's B2B or B2C. So, okay, I'm gonna carry on with the questions. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, Nick asks, um, can you on can on-demand pricing be used for Print IQ outsourcing module? Uh, Rob and Paul. Over to you, Rob. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Um, that's a great question, Nick. The I do believe if we're outsourcing direct, you're possibly already using this with your setup now. But yeah, I believe we can do that. But I will check with obviously you know PVT um, and come back to you on that one. But yeah, I believe we can actually pull that through. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Dan's just popped one in as well. Fantastic, thank you, Dan. With customer skins and simplified quotes within Print IQ, what is the real value add for an Infigo edition? Oh, I'll tell you, that's an expansive question, isn't it? Who wants to go first on that one? Yeah, I mean, um, I'll, Paul, do you want to take that one? And I'll just on, go first. So obviously from our point of view at Print IQ, um, simplified quotes, and if you like, customer portal side of things is all um, static products. So as soon as we use the Infigo side, he's a bit like what Paul showed you earlier with the with the bottle, um, you know, and, and designing or personalizing yourself. So the that's where it comes into its own on from the web to print side of things. Um, Paul, do you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, and I think, um, you know, we don't try to be an MIS and Print IQ don't try and be a web to print because, you know, we're masters in our field, they're masters in theirs. Um, yeah, so the pricing really, if you look at a lot of customers, maybe Sarah's uh, previous systems, you're managing pricing twice. You've got one price book in your MIS and one in your web to print. And when paper increases in in, in the, the cost, the charges, as well as ink and all the consumables, you're going back to your MIS, doing your changes there. And then secondly, you're doing it in your web to print platform. So the time saved is a huge one. Um, also knowledge, you know, in, in the past, you'd, you'd re, you rely on a, like Sarah mentioned, someone with 30 years experience to have to do those changes. If you have to do it once in the MIS and it drives that price into the storefront, it's a lot quicker to react and adapt to the changing markets or the, the segments you want to chase or go after. So it's really speed, cost savings, lack of knowledge. You, you know, if that's not in the business, if you're struggling to recruit people, the knowledge stays in your system. So the portals can be live and active driven from the MIS. So there's a lot really when we start talking about why we've done it, because our customers have demanded it from us. So maybe that might not be one for you at the moment, but a lot of our customers are using this now day in, day out. Yeah, I would I would definitely say that. The old systems that we were using before, everything had to be done once, twice, three times, four times before you actually got any live information onto the systems. Um, and you had to have experienced people doing it. You couldn't just give this, you know, to a, a brand new person joining the company. You had to have multiple years experience and understand the systems in and out to be able to do those updates. And it just slowed everything down. 
Okay, thank you, chaps. Um, Dan, I hope that helps. So, um, it's good to hear from a customer's point of view as well, how, um, how that can, can help adding that extra layer of software in. I've got a quick question, actually, chaps. Um, give me some real life benefits, um, day to day benefits of the custom um, quoting module that we showed earlier. And that will lead us nicely onto Patrick's question in a minute. Yeah, I think for me at the moment, um, there's a lot of things that go into the mix of challenges to businesses. And the one thing for me is, you know, recruitment, getting the right people in, you know, 30 years worth of experience, they don't exist anymore. So we're taking people into businesses with little or no print knowledge. Sounds quite scary. That's what I, that's what's happening. Um, also adapting as a business, chasing new markets, you might invest in equipment and being able to do that. Um, you know, driving that from the MIS into a storefront now, along with things like product sync, which we covered on our last webinar, where you can take static items that are in print IQ and actually push that product into a storefront and be selling that within minutes. You know, that's the thing now, it's reacting, speed of doing something. You know, if we roll the clock back, this was taking hours and hours and hours and days and maybe even weeks sometimes to adapt to an idea. Whereas now you could be minutes or maybe worst case scenario, hours. So for me, it's the ability to be agile and pivot as a business. And also- Paul, can I just leave you on for a second? Because yeah. I, another, another question um, that, that is probably aligned to what you mentioned on previous sessions. I noticed that when you were going for your demo, you highlighted the live pricing in the checkout, but there seemed to be a change of the pricing as you were changing the attributes on the landing page. Is there live pricing on the product landing page for the end user as well? Yeah, that's what the live pricing is. So as we're changing those attributes, which are the operations in IQ language, that's actually then going back to some of the core costings. So essentially, as I said, we use Print IQ as a calculator because it's a fantastic calculation engine. That's what the MIS platform is built around. It's, it's cost centers based around customers and also discounts or um, other applicable things that you're giving to your customer base. Now, all of that is managed in the MIS platform and then IQ is being told what to display as price. So as you change the attributes, that's changing the cost of paper because 70 gram paper costs more or less than 110 gram paper or the brand may change or the size is different. So that's all driven as your true core cost centers from the MIS. That makes sense. And thank you for explaining that. Patrick asks, um, quite a big question this. When will the new integration feature, Print IQ, be available? In September, he's asking, question mark. So obviously we've said it's gonna be on display at Printing United. Will it be available for people in in, um, in September? That's the million dollar question. Hopefully it's not a million dollars, by the way. I hope not, Chris. Um, <laughs> the honest answer is it will be available, obviously, to see in September, as you rightly say, as well, we've just shown now. Um, at Printing United, and I think it won't be long after uh, September before that's released. It just depends on what one, probably both of us realistically, one of our uh, patch release dates. Okay, thank you very much. That's a good so we have another question coming through. While the person, Chris is actually typing at the moment, so I'll wait for him to finish. I've got one actually. I was just come through actually. I'll do Chris first. Hey, Chris Mays. Um, <coughs> if we already have templates built in Infigo, how difficult is it to use the new process in Print IQ? Oh, that's a good one. So they've already got templates built in Infigo. And I think, um, guess, if I'm guessing right here, Chris, this is a potential if you moved into Print IQ. Yeah, I think that's what Chris is saying. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. <clears throat> um, yes, 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 yeah. You know, with, with Infigo, there's been so many scenarios thrown at the, the business over 15 years. Um, as we've shown before, it's um, it's really hard at times because those those elements of driving Infigo forward have given it such a, a, a real depth of an MIS field to a web to print system, which you don't really, you very, very rarely see that. Um, and having worked at Print IQ past in a similar role um, and knowing how deep an MIS goes in regards to cost calculations and operations and machine setup and all of the things you, have, you can add in, you can do the sim similar thing in Infigo in regards to the depth of changes. Um, there are options to take Infigo 
and actually place the technology into print iq so that could be an option that we could discuss um as we said we're getting a lot of different scenarios coming at infigo in regards to can we have just this bit of the technology could we take that could we take that and again mm -hmm. the company that we are and the team we've got will always investigate it they'll obviously be the time we say no but it's very rare and yeah. it seems to me that might be a conversation between the three of you yeah yeah, I think the other side of it is, as Sarah was um, mentioning earlier, Sarah or Positive have gone with Print IQ first, um, which has probably made things a little bit easier because we've created all the products in IQ that has then been transferred very simply into Infigo. And um, I think what Chris is saying is, can we do that role reversal? Um, now, speaking with, I think it was Alex and BBT recently, I think that is something that is being looked at as well. So, so we what Chris, I think, is saying is he doesn't want to recreate everything again in Print IQ or an MIS system, which he's already created in Web to Print. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how I take it as well. Yeah. That's a fantastic scenario that we, would be good to, to cover off. Maybe that's a potential workshop we could offer. Okay, I, I have a question actually uh, for both of you, or maybe maybe Paul. During Paul's demo, um, Paul was dragging some artwork into uh, into the, the platform. Um, and then you mentioned, Paul, you could do pre-fighting. Is there an option to use another element of, of the workflow, uh, like an in-focus product? Is that something that we could do? So I know today we're talking web to print MIS, but could we add a, a pre-fighting tool in as well and use something like in-focus? Yeah, we, we, we certainly could. So as, as part of our core solution, we have um, pit stop server built in which is it's oemd it sits with inside our solution so all of the eals if you've got access to and focus action lists or pitch dot pre-flight profiles the ppps we would bring those in so some customers that we're dealing with now they're very clear on the workflow we've got in focus switch we'll use our connect flow module and push that out via um, csv or xml along with the artwork and then switch takes that others are saying well no we want to actually pre-flight that up front and let the user make that decision so we have the ability to do that in infigo today that's something that is a module that sits on the price list and a lot of customers are making a, um, a a huge amount of use out of it because they're saving a huge amount of time. The customer knows their artwork doesn't meet the criteria within 10 seconds and you get the full report given to them also. So yeah, there is, there is that option available today. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. Well, um, that just about wraps everything up. There's no more questions to go through. Um, you've been watching um, Elevate Your Business with Intelligent Integrations with Infigo and Print IQ. As we mentioned earlier, you can book a, a technical demo with um, either Infigo or Print IQ at Print United in September. Um, thank you ever so much for having joined us today. Really appreciate your input, Sarah, and all the great work that you and Positive Plus do. Thank you to everybody else in the previous sessions. This is part of a series. There will be more. Uh, we hope to share more features. And we also welcome, uh, what, what, what do you want to see? What do you want us to share with you? So please get in touch. Thanks again. And uh, thank you to today's panel as well. Bye for now. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Rob.